The first Buddhist monasteries in Ladakh were founded by pilgrims on their way to Mount Kailas, the most sacred place of all for Tibetans. One of the most important monasteries is that of Tikse. This magnificent architectural complex stands on a low hill 17 kilometers upriver from Leh. Monastery was founded in the 15th century by the Galupka order, popularly known as yellow caps. Inside, the walls are decorated with magnificent, well-conserved friezes from the 16th and 17th centuries, depicting scenes from monastic life and images of terrible deities. Alongside them, the manuscripts that contain the mantras written on sheets of rice paper are kept in small niches and protected by boards and multicolored cloths. The sound of the gong and the trumpets announces the start of prayer. Buddhism arrived in Ladakh in the second century BC and a thousand years later it was adopted in neighboring Tibet. With a slow, monotonous rhythm, the monks recite the mantras, the prayers to Buddha. Reciting the mantras, they try to free themselves from desires and senses and develop the qualities of conscience, goodness and wisdom. More than a religion, Buddhism is a philosophy or a path. Its aim is to eradicate the pain which is inseparable from existence, shaking free earthly ties through moderation, renunciation and meditation. In short, to reach Nirvana. This state was reached by Buddha 2,500 years ago. Buddha means someone who is awake and is the achievement of a man called Siddhartha Gautama who was born in southern Nepal. At the age of 35, after deep meditation, he reached the state of illumination. The rest of his life he spent traveling and spreading his teachings. At the foot of the Tikse Monastery, a group of Chortans indicates one of the most sacred places in the valley. They were built by the royal family in order to fulfill the worthy acts prescribed by Buddhism. The Chortans generally contain the relics and sacred objects of a saint. Today is the most important day in the year for the monks of Lamayuru. In just a few hours, the annual festival of the dances called Cham will begin.
From the first light of the morning, the Ladakhis who have come from all corners of the valley gather in the courtyard of the monastery known as the Chamra, the place for dancing. While traditional music plays, the people find the best spot from which to observe the spectacle. No one wants to miss this great event which is so important in the life of these people. Meanwhile, in a nearby room, the dancing monks make their final preparations. The sound of the clarinets announces that the dance is about to begin. The cham was introduced into Nepal along with Tibetan Buddhism in the 16th century, and its dances represent Buddhists' fear of demons and monstrous creatures, though some anthropologists see the cham as a metaphor of the gradual conquest of the ego, the ultimate aim of Buddhism. This song dance, which lasts two days, each movement has a meaning, represents one of the manifestations of the protecting gods who seek to destroy evil spirits. These have their origin in the Bon Chos, the animist religion which preceded Buddhism. hold a small bowl in the shape of a caravel in which they trap the evil spirits and supernatural forces. It is these that cause fires, floods, drought, hunger and earthquakes. As evening falls, peace returns to Lama Yuru. As every afternoon, Dorsen Sering, the abbot of the monastery, comes out onto the terrace to watch the sun set over the mountains, while he tries to imagine what is happening in the land beyond those peaks. Since he left Tibet 11 years ago, Dorsen has had no news of his family who continue to live in a small village in the west of the country nor has he heard anything of the monks of his monastery with whom he shared 40 years of his life. But like the majority of refugees, he does not lose hope that one day they'll be able to return to Tibet. As long as the Dalai Lama remains alive, the flame of the Tibetan cause will not go out. Morning.